very good morning to everybody um today is thursday the 6th of october 2016 and the titi which was operating here this morning during sunrise in india was panchami titi it is shukla panchami because it's shukla paksha which means it is the waxing phase of the moon and panchami is the fifth lunar day or it is a fifth relationship between the sun and the moon. And many of you have asked me why I didn't do a video yesterday. And the reason was, it was the same nakshatra which was operating during sunrise the day before and yesterday, and that was Vishaka. And today, this morning during sunrise, the nakshatra which was operating was Anuradha nakshatra. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Tithi, which is Panchami, the fifth lunar day uh, of the waxing phase of the moon, that is Shukla Paksha. So that's why it's called as Shukla Panchami. So let us talk a little bit about that and then we'll go to the, the Nakshatra, which is Anuradha. Now the nature of this uh, Tithi is called as Lakshmi Prada. Lakshmi Prada means which can be interpreted as the wealth giver because Lakshmi is a goddess of prosperity and wealth. Okay, so that is why all um, activities which is related to wealth matters in human life is what Panchamititi is associated with. Now it is auspicious for most you know, works that you would want to take, uh, all auspicious events that you want to do like related to the house matters, related to travel, uh, related to money lending, except for money lending, sorry, except for money lending, because you don't want Lakshmi to leave your home, you want Lakshmi to come home. So all those things, uh, you know, your pujas, your, uh, you know, ceremonies, all of that would be a very auspicious day, a panchami. Now, according to uh, Mahurta Chintamani, it is the Nagas or the Sarpas, the deities who rule the serpents. This rules the Shukla Panchami and uh, thus it is very favorable for all activities which is also related to the Nagas which is gaining of wisdom, secret knowledge. So the Nagas are also related to rebirth. So administering medicine, why? Because the Nagas also have the poison in them. So they also have the ability to cure and heal. <clears throat> so administering medicine and uh, you know also be able to remove the negativities of your life which is remove the poison the toxic elements from your life performing surgery okay so all these activities um, and the nagas are supposed to be the guardians of the treasure so again you can see this association with lakshmi treasure all the treasures which are underground which are hidden okay those are the treasures which the nagas um, rule over so all those hidden treasures, all those inheritances that you would get, all of that, the wealth which comes through inheritance, which is unearned, which is through treasures, that is all associated with Panchami, Shukla Panchami. <clears throat> now, according to Varaha Mihiras, uh, Brahat Samhita, Panchami is ruled by Chandrama, which is your um, uh, the, the moon god. Now, all these, what moon stands for, uh, which is water, moon is a watery planet, emotions, uh, moon also signifies the mother. So all those things are activities which are uh, related to these aspects of the Chandrama, which is the moon, are all acceptable during this day as per uh, Varaha Mira. Now let's go to the, the nakshatra which is operating, which is Anuradha. Now, Anu means uh, near to or the latter or along, which is along the path or something like that. So this is a reference to the previous nakshatra, which is uh, called as Radha. Vishaka was also called as Radha. Now Anuradha is the later Radha, the former, former Radha or the following Radha. So it also symbolizes subsequent success. And Radha 
predominantly specifies prosperity, devotion, success. She is also called a Shri, which again is a reference to wealth giving Lakshmi. Okay, so you again see that this is a great nakshatra, and the indication of this nakshatra is called as the star of success. So, and also uh, Anuradha has another meaning, which means a small flash of lightning. It's also a tiny spark. So this is the spark of inspiration. This is the spark which can get you going in life. You know, this is a spark which is going to transform you. Okay, put you on the path of uh, self -reali self realization. So this is again an indication towards the success of this uh, vested in this uh, nakshatra. That's why it's called the star of success. Now, in the ancient times, Anuradha was called as the Rohini nakshatra of the southern hemisphere. Okay, so all those elements that you see with Rohini, which is fertility, uh, virility, all of that is associated with Radha. So Radha is supposed to be um, uh, you know, again associated because of the star of success and fertility, it is again the Pratima, the symbology which is of Anuradha Nakshatra is again a triumphal archway. It is the same as Vishaka, as we talked as, uh, you know, day before yesterday. So the triumphal archway is again a uh, um, significance of saying that it is you are going to go through these phases of uh, you know, great achievements, right? Uh, just like Vishaka. But there is a subtle difference between the the triumphal arcway of Vishaka and the tri triumphal arcway of Anuradha. And that will be more clearer when I speak about related to the deity. But let me give you the, the hint. The hint is Vishaka's energy of success is by by force by uh, you know but it, it, because it also has the indra's element of competence and dominance and overpowering okay so that is success through by hook or crook by uh, you know showing might by showing power so that is vishaka's way okay although it is it is it's got those twin uh, um, branched approach which is one it is called as a Mishra Nakshatra, Vishaka. It's a, it's, it's a sharp and a soft. So it has the Agni's qualities and Indra's qualities of dominion. And um, Agni is also another side of Agni as a softer quality. So you see that the triumphal arcway, the success is through uh, by force. But here, when it comes to Anuradha, it has got a very softened approach. It is more to do with uh, 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 diplomacy. This is the right word to use. So Anuradha is most diplomatic way of achieving its success. And I will talk about those themes in more detail as we go through this presentation. Another symbology of uh, Vishaka, oh, sorry, uh, Anuradha Nakshatra is the lotus flower. Now this is a reflection of the ability to blossom in any life situation. So you see that Anuradha people might have come from very little means in their life, but they grew up to blossom like the lotus. So in a sense, the esoteric meaning is lotus always blossoms or blooms in um, muddy waters. So there is a lot of uh, muddiness. There is a lot of um, unconducive environment, but in those unconducive environment, the flower looks so beautiful, so pristine, it looks so balanced, it looks so pure. Okay, so that is what lotus flower is all about. And that is how people who are born in Anuradha could be. They could be coming from very poor backgrounds, very, uh, you know, powerish backgrounds and then rising very high uh, in life to a status of being recognized. Um, you know, worldwide. So that is the sort of potential this nakshatra has. The third symbology, the pratima of this nakshatra Nurada is called as the staff, a staff. Now, a staff in the ancient times was carried by the rishis and the sages and the important people. 
um, and it was believed that the rishis, the maharishis, used to have all their powers in those staff. So the staff also was a, a, a self-defense equipment that you used to carry with. So a staff essentially demonstrates courage. It also demonstrates strength and it demonstrates a device or a tool of safety. So this is again the same uh, themes would apply into um, an Anuradha native. Now coming to the, the Devata, which is the tutelary architect, the presiding deity, the regent of this nakshatra is Mitra. Now as per uh, um, Vedic uh, literature and scriptures, Mitra in the Rig Vedic times was referred to as one of the 12 Adityas or the Vedic solar deities. And he was the god of friendship and partnership. So what he does in his domain is he promotes good faith. He promotes cordiality. He promotes cooperation amongst humanity. So he becomes the divine friend, the lord of compassion. So this is from a Vedic perspective of Mitra. Now, I also would like to take the attention of my viewers to a different form of Mitra, which is called as Mitraism. Mitraism was a cult which came out in the Persian, uh, in Iran, in Persian um, worship. So they, this god of Mitra, the Iranian Mitra, or the Indo-Iranian proto-god Mitra, Okay, he, he, the meaning of uh, the Iranian meaning of Mitra was contract, agreement, covenant. Okay, so this was, these were the themes of the Zoroastrian god Mitra. Okay, the Persian god Mitra, and again you can see the similarities between friendship, contracts, unions, agreements, covenants. All of this are are from this cult of Mitraism. Now, Mithraism also became popular in um, the Greek mythology. So Mithras, the Greek god, is depicted in uh, many of the scenes that you have often seen as the bull slayer. So it is the sacred bull which Mithras is uh, slaying. And this iconography or this picture was called as uh, Taurotomy. Taurotomy. So Taurus, this is the significance of again showing you the connection with Taurus. Now Anuradha is in Scorpio and right opposite in the zodiac is Taurus, the bull sign. So it is a symbology to reflect from the central cult which came from the Roman uh, Mithraic mysteries that they say is the, the, the slaying of the scorpion who is slaying the bull of the Taurus. Again, I told you the Rig Vedic times had recognized this from Rohini, saying that the southern hemisphere of Rohini, and then you can see even the Greek, uh, you know, mystery, mysterious cult also saying, showing this symbolically through the bull slaying event. Now, this word Mitra can be split in Sanskrit as Mi Iti Ra. So it is me iti ra. So mitra is me iti ra. Now what is this? Now ra, if you see in the Egyptian mythology or the Egyptian pantheon, is the Egyptian pantheon god or the solar deity, and he is also called as Amun Ra in the Egyptian world, right? Who later on he became known as Amun Min, meaning the bull of his mother. Amun Min means the bull of his mother. So again, you see this association of Mitra with the solar deity Amunra. Just as I said, Mitra was one of the, the 12 Adityas, the solar Vedic solar deity. So again, you see in um, the, the Egyptian civilization, also you see the con connection with the bull of his mother, Amun Min, Amunra. Now, in, as per legend, um, you know, Mitra can never be talked about, uh, you know, singularly. It's always, you look at all Rig Vedic hymns, they're always being associated with 
Mitra and Varuna. They are like inseparable. They have the same body, okay, but two heads. Just like what we saw with Vishaka Nakshatra, which is Indragni, okay, the dimorphic pair. Here also, they are a dimorphic pair, Mitra and Varuna. Now, Varuna, if you remember, he is the god or the, ro or the, the ruling uh, deity of Satabisha Nakshatra. So obviously what you see is a very strong connection between uh, Anuradha Nakshatra and Shatabisha Nakshatra. Now you have to know about the genesis of, um, of uh, Mitra and Varuna is Mitra and Varuna, as I said, they have the single body and because of a curse, Vashishta Rishi, one of the Manasputras, Manasputras is uh, the son who was born from the mind of Brahma the progenitor, the procreator. So he was one of the Manasputras, Vasishta. Because of a curse, he was uh, bodiless. He had to abandon his body. The curse made him abandon his bodies. And his soul was roaming around without a body. And that's when he goes to Brahma and Brahma gives him a boon. And as per the boon, what happens is Vasishta enters the, the body of Mitra and Varuna. So as Mitra and Varuna were going, it was not one soul it is three souls in the same body it's vitra varuna and vashishta and when they go to the seashore they actually come across the celestial nymph urvashi now uh, you know vashishta okay instantly leaves the body and goes into the the so uh, goes into the body of urvashi and she vashishta wants to um, you know, copulate with Mitra and Varuna so that he could be reborn. But Vashishta from Urvashi's body is attracted more to Mitra than Varuna. And because of this fight between Mitra and Varuna, and they are in the same body, they decide to part ways because both of them want to go after Urvashi and Urvashi wants to go with Mitra. So what you often see with um, Anuradha Nakshatra, likewise what you have seen with uh, Kritika Nakshatra, you see uh, these formations of love triangle, right? It was Radha was the, uh, the lover of Shri Krishna, okay? But Shri Krishna never got married to Radha, or, you know, she, he got married to Rukmini. So again, there was this love triangle. Right? So you often see with Anuradha Nakshatra that these love triangles become very prominent. And then remember from Mitra and Varuna, uh, because Urvashi chose uh, to go with Mitra and she copulated with him, but Varuna was left on. And so he, his vital fluid, which came out because of his, ins, uh, because of his desire to copulate with uh, Urvashi, and he put the, the 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 vital fluid in a pot, and the child was born from that pot, and he was called as Kumba Sham, Shambhava. Kumba Shambhava means Kumba means the pot, the earthen pot, and Shambhava is somebody who is born from it. So Kumba Shambhava was none other than the great Rishi Agastya, Agastya who is very great in southern India, and he's very much revered. And from the compilation of um, Mitra and Urvashi was Vashishta Rishi who was reborn, who was reincarnated. Okay, so uh, again, some themes that I have wanted to talk to you about with this association with Mitra Varuna is usually what happens is these people find to have these qualities of both Shatabisha Nakshatra and Anuradha Nakshatra within them. So whenever you look at uh, Narada native, also know that you have these qualities. And similarly with Shatabisha, you, you have both these qualities inherent with you of friendship or law and order, um, following the righteous thing, the righteous path is what Varuna's domain is. He's very, very sensitive with uh, social norms, with justice. Okay, that is Varuna's domain. And Mitra's domain is always about contracts, unions, diplomacy. Right, so this is 
forging a lawful alliance though so mitra is always called as the god of oath and varuna is always forging for lawful alliances so you see this uh, union of these two um, deities very strongly with anuradha and chatubisha nakshatra now the power of this nakshatra is called as radhana shakti radhana means the power of worship right and the desire of mitra was to be regarded as the friend in all the worlds so basically what the desire was to gain honor and abundance so that is the significance now the tree which is associated with anuradha uh, it is called as a vakula tree or also called as bakula bakula or bakula so it is a, a very small yellowish fragrant flower which comes from the vakula tree which is called as a vakula pushpa it is used in ornaments making uh, you know garlands and uh, you know ornaments now this was so fragrant the smell of vakula flower is so fragrant so pleasant that the milkmaids of vrindavan were allured who were the milkmaids the milkmaids were the gopis who were allured by krishna playing the flute under a vakula tree on the banks of river yamuna right so this tree is believed to blossom when sprinkled with nectar okay by lovely women when they talk the the it blossoms the flower and they are supposed to be so fragrant that even the the flower falls from the tree for a couple of days the fragrant never dies and there is also a popular belief this this tree is also in sanskrit is called as maul shri maul shri and it is believed by uh, some people that this tree is very strongly associated with gautam buddha and most of the buddhist scriptures talk very highly about the bakula tree now for uh, for the modern uh, people it is believed that osho rajneesh okay a uh, uh, a mystical cult guru okay again you remember the cult of mitraism i talked about which became very popular now osho rajneesh is believed to have been enlightened in jabalpur in india under a maul shri tree this is the swakula tree that is where he found his enlightenment that is what you know uh, his followers uh, talk about now one of the medical ayurvedic benefits of vakula is it says it removes the removes the bad breath if you have vakula you know uh, in the form of the root or whatever the bark of the tree um, can help you remove the breath and it also is supposed to strengthen your gums and your teeth so this is from a medical perspective now <clears throat> now coming to some of the general characteristics what i've seen with anuradha nakshatra is it gives them balance in relationship usually you see um, both of them are honoring and seeking to be very honorable in their relationships right so mitra from that perspective he indicates compassion devotion and right relationships so one of the themes i have seen with anuradha is they want to be friends with everybody right they are quite emotionally very sensitive to others and place the welfare of others over their own so this is again about bring out the real value of friendship of companionship now uh, anuradha nakshatra natives this is here is another theme uh, face untoward obstacles in achieving their desired goals and their aims in life and after several reversals of fortunes they ultimately achieve their desired results and that is that usually comes through hard work and help of friends remind remember that always the friends are there to help you out right now varaha mihira says anuradha moon people and supposed to be wealthy they live in foreign lands that is where they live away from their place of birth they tend to travel a lot or wander around and the one thing that he talks about varaha mihira they cannot bear their hunger they cannot bear their hunger so this is uh, you know something what he has written about now mitra 
is the god of friendship i said he promotes co- uh, cooperation between humanity any contracts or agreements are mitra's duty to protect so any contracts that you want to get into is always better to get it done on a anuradha nakshatra day when uh, uh, you you know you can appease mitra and seek his blessings before you go and sign this contract so mitra gives compassion devotion and love and that is what radha you know the cowherd maiden who was friend and lover of krishna is is his devoted companion so this has this following happening here so all people who have strong prominent planets in anuradha could also be associated with uh, some of the movements like iskon movement shri krishna movement okay hari ram hari krishna movement so that is what radha's desire was to be with uh, krishna the supreme lord and that is again you see that in anuradha the devotion the radhana shakti the the wanting to worship lord krishna now from another perspective what you see is uh, the are uh, the anuradha nakshatra people are quite goal focused they are able to maintain and balance friendships their friendships are uh, are or the friendly com- um, cooperations with others can bring them fame and recognition this is again very important through the your friend circle through your uh, you know circle of acquaintances and um, rec- you achieve fame and recognition so <clears throat> any contracts as i said again becomes uh, you know mitra's domain now traditionally what it is said is that uh, anuradha people seem to have difficult relationship with their mothers however they are very faithful and dedicated to the ones they love and uh, they do have a uh, um a side of being jealous they have this jealous streak uh, when they need to be very cautious about controlling their anger side because whenever there is they are angry there is jealousy in them that is can bring in um, you know the negative aspects of anuradha now it is often said that you know these people live far away from the place of birth and they are always wandering and they love travel um, they love variety right um and they said that this is a, a mridhu nakshatra which is a soft nakshatra now uh one of the themes that i've seen with um now this is the most important part of anuradha anuradha has this very unique ability to forge agreements as i said but maintain diplomatic liaisons now what are those liaisons and i'll explain that in in greater detail firstly what you have to understand is anuradha is the energy of mars because it sits pretty much in scorpio so scorpio ruled mars has a very significant uh, impact on anuradha secondly anuradha's um, planetary ruler as per vimshoti dasha is saturn now look at those two energies of saturn and mars coming together so the combined energies of saturn and mars is what anuradha is now going into conflict or war like um, scenario is what martian tendencies are saturn is always the one who is trying to hold you back he is the law abider uh, he goes the righteous way he brings structure he brings organizations um, into into a box so this is saturn is um trying to hold back and mars is to move forward so th- those are those very uh, energies are very distinctive right they are quite polar opposites but what you need to understand is this conflict resolution agents that you often see you know for example post divorce attorneys social workers a uh, consulting psychologist who try to negotiate on smaller conflicts bigger conflicts um you know um any hostage crisis on negotiators okay so these are the sort of people that you would find uh getting involved more so and these people are very strong anuradha types 
Why? Is because on one side you see that uh, you have countries which are uh, stockpiling a lot of arms, ammunition, nuclear weapons, just as a deterrent. And they want to challenge the people who threaten them. So that is the Martian tendency. That is the Mars of Anuradha. But the, the Saturn of Anuradha is obliged to forge new alliances under pressure, under adversarial conditions, because Saturn wants to have peace, calm, tamas. So it is like a Cold War syndrome sort of atmosphere where you know you are only posturing and positioning and not actually wanting to show that you want a real war. And that is what Anuradha is all about. Okay, so that is the power of Anuradha is to form new alliances under a precarious situation, adversarial conditions, where there is tremendous pressure at some times to be able to deliver under those tough conditions. That is what Anuradha people have the ability to do that because if they can master their Saturn and their Mars in their charts, then they are crafty in deal making. So they can improve or work on their deal making capacities or capabilities. Anyway, so let's go back to the attributes which are given to Anuradha in Dhruvanadi. They say, Dhruvanadi says, uh, you know, Anuradha people have a strong body. They are leaders among men. They were devoted to sadhus or they are devoted to saints. They are interested in sports. Uh, they love visiting foreign lands and owning vehicles. Uh, they could be associated with ashram or working in uh, some ashram and even tool, pilgrimage tourage or tour operators. This is all what Dhruvanadi talks about. You know, go to pilgrimages and you have tour operators there. So these are the sort of people who would be operating with um, Anuradha Nakshatra. Now today is a favorable day for doing those scientific researches uh, study of occult, uh, f anything related to foreign affairs, healing, friendship, um, secretiveness, socializing with friends, travel to foreign lands, immigration, so all of that activities, exploration, okay, all these activities are very favorable today being Anuradha Nakshatra. What is it unfavorable for? It's unfavorable for marriages, it is unfavorable for confrontation, it is unfavorable for mundane actions. Um, beginning or or inaugural events. So all these things should be avoided on when Anuradha Nakshatra is operating. Okay, so thanks very much for watching my um, daily moon transit videos and you can share more feedback and comments in the comment section and you can also go to my YouTube, uh, oh, sorry, my Facebook page and also um, you know start a discussion thread on Anuradha Nakshatra there. So thank you very much.